Okay, in today's lesson we're going to be looking at uh, our second part of our series about weather. And in this particular video we're going to basically be focusing on a couple things. We're going to look at high pressure systems and low pressure systems. Basically these are cold fronts and warm fronts. And when they collide together what basically occurs as a result of these two fronts coming together. So that's what I'm going to look at here. Okay, so as we were saying in this video, we're going to look at different uh, types of uh, warm and cold air systems, basically uh, high pressure and low pressure systems, and we're going to look at some student labs to demonstrate some of those systems and what we're looking at in regard to high and low pressure. Now, for example, we can demonstrate high pressure simply by using a potato and a straw, and so if we leave our thumb off the end of the straw and we simply try to run our straw through the potato, it just doesn't go very far. It just doesn't go very far. And that's because, 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 because basically what happens is air is mad. Air is mad. Air is mad. And so air takes up space and it still has mass. And so what happens is as it enters the potato, um, the potato is shoving itself through the straw and it pushes the air outward that's coming into the straw. But if we close the end of our straw, the air has nowhere to go. So if we do the same thing again, same thing again, the straw can actually go all the way through the potato. That demonstrates a high pressure system. Because we are holding our thumb over it, it contains all those molecules that typically would have left. Now remember, a high pressure system would be like a cold air mass because all the molecules are tied up together and crunched together, crunched together, crunched together, crunched together. It creates a much heavier system in our atmosphere. So that's our demonstration is that it has much more mass and it's basically going to weigh down more. It's just basically going to be a high pressure system. So I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Try that one at home. Now to demonstrate low pressure systems, what we're going to see is some students working in this particular lab where they have two balloons that are connected together on a rod above their head. Now these two balloons, typically what most students would think is if you blow between them, it would push them away. Where actually the opposite happens. The balloons will come together. Now why is this? This is because blowing between the balloons causes a low pressure system. Here's what happens. Basically, the inside of the balloon has an equal pressure as the outside of the balloon as the air inside the balloon pushes the latex of the balloon outwards, while the atmosphere outside the balloon is equal to the pressure inside the balloon, much how an airplane or a submarine would pressurize its internal compartments to prevent it from crushing in or from exploding outward. Now, what's going to happen is when you blow between these balloons, it actually creates a difference, difference in air pressure. Remember, uh, high pressure or low pressure systems, they move at different rates of speed. So when we blow between these balloons, it creates a low pressure system. Well, the balloons, because they have an internal environment that is equal to the normal system, causes them to try to equalize, and therefore they come together. It's much how our atmosphere works, causing the weather that we see around us. Now, as you can see here, you can see some students doing some different labs. In this particular lab, what you're watching is you're seeing a student that has placed a, a plastic bag or a small Ziploc bag underneath the book, and he's aired it up. And what happens in this video is basically, uh, this represents a cold air system and a warm air system. So basically, uh, the cold air represents a high pressure system, the book represents a low pressure system. When we see this happen, it's basically to show us that the cold air system actually pushes the warm air system up because the high, uh, the high pressure, which is our warmer air, is pushed up over the cold air, causing it to rise up rapidly into the atmosphere. Now, cold air will actually move twice as fast as warm air when we're talking about fronts that come together. Okay, on this next slide, you're going to see students with a hair dryer, and what they're doing is basically putting a ping pong ball on the air that's rising from the hair dryer. Now what happens here in this yeah, is that the hair dryer is shooting a column of air up between air that's also in the room that actually stays in pretty much the same area that it's been. Now this column of air, air shoots up holding the ping pong ball in place because the more still areas are basically keeping that column within the same area. Now as they tilt the hair dryer left and right you'll notice that the ping pong ball will tend to stay in this column of air. Now this lab basically represents our jet stream. Jet streams are like columns of air that are in our upper atmosphere, so basically in the troposphere where our weather takes place. Now they're approximately eight miles up above the surface of the air, basically the higher areas of the troposphere. And these are basically weather columns, much like the East Australian current you saw in Nemo, where the turtles would go through these currents in the ocean. Well, we see this also in our upper atmosphere. Now these different columns of air will move 
throughout the year, causing our weather disturbances that we see. Because in the spring and fall season especially, we see warm tropical air moving towards the poles of the earth, and they're fighting for those areas because of course we still have our high pressure and low pressure systems that basically work against each other, causing these weather fronts. Now, later in this video, you're going to see what happens in this when we can see some major wind disturbances that occur as fronts come through. like crazy and uh, right now we have wind gusts of up to 37 miles per hour now this is a result of we have a, a cold front moving in and remember a cold front can move twice as fast as a warm front can move and so what's happening is this uh, really high pressure system is moving in and remember cold fronts have more uh, pressure because their molecules are more condensed and so what that results in is our uh, warm front which is on the other side of the system has a higher pressure so it's rushing up over top of the cold front. Well, that's bringing really a lot of wind through our area. It's also dropping our temperature right now. So we're going to cut away from this. We're going to look at our weather maps for today and kind of see what's going on that's causing this wind pressure that we see right now. Okay, I'm not really a weatherman, but I play one on YouTube. Now let's look at our weather. Okay, in our weather system that we saw in this video where we had this huge, monstrous wind that was coming our way the other day, Basically what was going on was we had the jet streams that are up north basically pushing down a bunch of upper level disturbances that were coming our direction. Now if you notice up here in this area, up here in Canada, in the, in the western area of Canada, you're going to see what's a big old H up there. Now that big H basically stands for a high pressure system. Now if you remember high pressure means cold air. So that cold air is sweeping down, but we also have a, uh, if you notice those red dots that are up there in Canada that are kind of moving off to the east, that is warm air coming up from the coast that's kind of moving up. So it's causing some disturbances up in that area. But what I essentially want to pay attention to is down here in the Texas area, what we see here. We notice these uh, blue, basically uh, blue areas, which means cold, and they're triangles and they're moving off in an eastward way. So basically this is a high pressure system that's moving off to the east. It's a cold front. Now if you notice up here in this area, up here going across the top uh, panhandle part of Texas and on up into Kansas and uh, through Oklahoma and up that, through that area, we see this uh, warm pressure system or warm air system which is basically low pressure which is being pushed out of the way. Now these two disturbances when they come together causes a major amount of wind. Now this disturbance that came through, remember cold air moves at a much higher rate than warm air does and so it pushes the warm air on out of there but it also creates a large major weather disturbance. This is where tornadoes and all these storms come from and that's what happened in this storm. Essentially what happened was we had a tornado that basically broke out in the eastern part of the United States. We also had all this rain that formed and you notice it in this yellow circle here up into the um, Alabama and on into Florida a little bit and on up into the northern area of the United States a little bit up in the eastern part we saw some rain disturbances this is where the tornadoes hit and we also saw some snow come out of this up in the northern part of the United States as a result of this weather system that came through so all this warm moist air was pushed up out of the way by this cold air that was driving it and it caused an upper level disturbance from our jet stream which essentially created a lot of condensation and the dew point the temperature was just right to create a lot of upper level disturbances which gave us quite a quite a run for our money across the United States in yesterday's weather forecast. Okay, so we were under a high wind advisory, which was also something to be cautious about, especially for wildfires and also for folks that maybe live in uh, trailers and for uh, just traffic in general. Lots of dust storms, which made the visibility on the streets very hard to see yesterday. You can find many more of my videos available on YouTube from a variety of different science topics. Simply go to YouTube and do a YouTube search. Just type in HP ISD Hayes. If you learned something or you enjoyed my videos, I'd appreciate you leaving me a comment. Thanks again for watching.